Hi there, my name is Madison with Stanley and Associates. We're a personal injury firm here in the DFW. We post a lot of content on our other social media platforms like Instagram and TikTok. I often do videos about tips and tricks to stay safe on the road, statistics about car crashes here in the DFW. I even do some mini deep dives into some pretty controversial cases like that of Ethan Couch, AKA the Affluenza Kid. But I wanted to start a series here on some famous personal injury cases, which you might not think that there are a lot of, but there's some pretty juicy ones. Today's case was inspired by a settlement we recently just had. We had a client who burned herself on a defective coffee machine that wouldn't stop dispensing blistering hot coffee. We got her treatment and a settlement, but it did bring me back to a case that stirred up a lot of controversy back in the 90s. I get really excited to talk about this case because most people have a negative outlook towards it because they don't know the full context or the, the real story about it, really. This case takes us back to February 27th, 1992 in a McDonald's drive through Today I want to talk about the legal case of Liebig versus McDonald's, or as most people know it, the hot coffee lawsuit. Although it is before my time, because I was born in 1997, I still heard a lot about it growing up. Early into high school, my class even had a debate about it. A lot of people saying, you should know that coffee is hot. The bare minimum, it has a hot coffee label on the cup. And a lot of us, myself included, thought that this was just a woman who went into a McDonald's restaurant, ordered a cup of coffee, spilled some on her hands, and went completely nuclear. And tried and succeeded at getting millions of dollars from McDonald's. And since this incident happened, that's basically been the public consensus, is that this woman was just money hungry. However, today it has been acknowledged that this case has unfairly been a prime example of frivolous litigation or just an unnecessary greedy lawsuit, which it was not. We now understand that there is a lot more to this case than initially believed. Our story centers around Miss Stella May Liebig. Born on December 14th, 1912 in Norwich, England, she was 79 years old at the time of our story. And she was said to be, by the people who knew her, a very active woman. February 27th, 1992, Stella was a passenger in her grandson's vehicle when they were going through a McDonald's drive through in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Stella purchased a 49 cent cup of coffee. 49 cent. I don't I don't think you can get a cup of anything for 49 cent today. Stella's grandson then parked his vehicle in the McDonald's parking lot so that Stella could add cream and sugar to her coffee. Stella put the cup of coffee in between her knees to remove the lid. In doing so, she accidentally spilled the coffee all over her lap. All I remember is trying to get out of the car. I screamed, not realizing I was burned that bad. I knew I was in terrible pain. Stella at the time was wearing cotton sweatpants and the cotton absorbed the hot coffee and kept it in contact with her skin, causing severe burns on her thighs, buttocks, and groin. Next thing I know, Grandma started screaming. I looked over and I noticed the coffee cup had tilted over. And... Tiano rushed his grandmother to Presbyterian Hospital. In so much pain, she went into shock. Her burns were classified as third degree burns, which are the most severe type of burn injury. These burns go through all layers of skin, underlying tissue, and even bone. Stella needed skin grafts that ultimately resulted in permanent scarring and disfigurement. She was also partially disabled for two years, undergoing constant treatments and rehabilitation. Now, there are images of Stella's injuries online. However, I will not be showing them here because they are just quite severe and substantial, and I just can't imagine the pain poor Stella must have endured that day. Stella spent a little over a week in the hospital and afterwards she needed care at home. Now, I'm not sure what hospital prices looked like in 1992, but today, if you can imagine being in the hospital for a week and then needing aftercare, most people can't afford it. Stella at 79 was not a working woman. She could not afford massive medical expenses like this. That's when she asked McDonald's for $20,000 to simply cover her medical expenses. However, McDonald's rejected and instead offered Stella $800 as compensation, which is a massive slap in the face. Again, I don't know about 1992 standards, but today $800 won't even pay rent. So it's certainly not gonna make a dent in massive overwhelming hospital bills. And Stella knew this too, so she took action. Stella hired Texas attorney Reed Morgan. Morgan then filed a law 
lawsuit in the U.S. District Court for the District of New Mexico. The lawsuit claimed that McDonald's was extremely careless selling coffee that was unreasonably dangerous. Initially, Morgan asked for $90,000, which McDonald's declined. I mean, they weren't giving Stella $20,000, they weren't going to give her $90,000. Morgan then doubled down and asked for $300,000, which unsurprisingly, McDonald's declined. Before these proceedings, a mediator suggested $225,000, but of course, McDonald's declined. The Liebig case trial took place between August 8th to August 17th, 1994, two years after the burn incident, with New Mexico District Court Judge Robert H. Scott presiding over the trial. The jurors were shown very graphic images of Stella's burns, as well as hearing expert testimony from people who claimed that the coffee was way too hot. Findings, McDonald's served coffee that was 30 to 40 degrees hotter than the coffee of other companies. They also learned that between 1982 to 1992, over 700 people, including children, suffered scalding injuries as a result of their coffee and they had paid over $500,000 in settlements. Despite knowing this, McDonald's did not change its policy and continued to serve coffee ranging from 180 to 190 degrees. And just a side note, liquids at this temperature can cause third degree burns two to seven seconds upon contact. Stella had that coffee trapped in her sweatpants in contact with her skin for who knows how long. McDonald's was aware of the burn risk, but they figured how much coffee they sell in a year versus how many people have been burned by that coffee, insignificant. An expert for McDonald's testified that burns are exceedingly rare, one for every 24 million cups of coffee served. They just said it's statistically insignificant and we're not going to change what we do. On August 18th, 1994, the jury found that McDonald's was 80% liable for this incident and Stella was 20% at fault. Which, in fairness, I'll give you, I can kind of see. If you're holding a cup of coffee in between your knees in the car, you could expect it to spill on you. However, the car, one, was not moving, and two, even if the coffee is hot, nobody is expecting their skin to practically melt off of their body because of coffee. Come on. Imagine if Stella had drank that coffee. What would have happened then? Would her taste buds have burned off? That would still be a problem, but I digress. The jury awarded Stella $160,000 in compensatory damages and then a whopping $2.7 million in punitive damages. Stella's lawyer suggested to the jury that she should be compensated for two days worth of McDonald's coffee revenue. And in 1994, one day's worth of only coffee sales for McDonald's was $1.35 million. Doesn't that make you furious at the $800 they were trying to give Stella? I mean, it makes me furious. It's the gall. It's the gumption. It's the audacity. Later, the judge did lower that amount to $640,000, but both Stella and McDonald's appealed this decision. They ended up settling outside of court for an undisclosed amount, so we don't even know how much she actually got. According to Kevin G. Gain, who later wrote an article about this incident for the Journal of Consumer and Commercial Law, Miss Liebeck had never filed a lawsuit in her life, and she never would have filed a lawsuit if McDonald's hadn't dismissed her request for compensation for pain and medical bills with an offer of $800. Elements of this lawsuit caused it to gain a lot of national attention, and all of it painted Stella in a negative light. If you spilt hot coffee on yourself, like, that was your own fault. I think she uh, won her case and won a, a lot of money. The summary of that story to me is tying up the court system for a bunch of nonsense. ABC News even calling her the poster child for excessive lawsuits. Unfortunately, this reputation stuck with Stella for a long time, even after her passing. Stella passed away August 5th, 2004, at the age of 91. According to her daughter, the physical and emotional strain caused by the burns and the court proceedings had greatly affected Stella's well-being. Mother, a strong woman before oh, this cup of coffee the spilled. The week before this happened, she dug out a palm tree in Tucson, she painted a ceiling, very, very very strong woman. Afterwards. After this happened, she never got to a point where she could, if her, if her little dachshund dug a hole in her stones in the backyard, she couldn't take a rake and it was very difficult for her to even cover that up. 
So she never regained the quality of life she had before. Stella probably never felt vindicated in her decision to demand compensation from McDonald's because of public and media scrutiny. People were very quick to criticize Stella for spilling the coffee on herself and completely failed to acknowledge the wrongdoing on McDonald's part. There is no reason that coffee should be so hot that even if you do spill on you, it'll cause such severe burns that you will have to get skin graft. Given Stella's age, this was already pretty significant, a woman of 79 to have burns this severe. But I wonder if the public's perception of this would change if this had happened to a child. Just food for thought. Stella simply wanted compensation for her medical bills, which personally I think is more than fair. $20,000 is not a lot in the grand scheme of what McDonald's brings in annually. In fact, McDonald's in the year of 1992 brought in $7.133 billion by the end of the year. They prolonged this case, drug it out, and drug Stella's reputation along with it, which is completely unfair. Also, what is unfair was the public's attitude towards Stella after this incident. Not only were people quick to jump to conclusions, but to the defense of a faceless multi-billion dollar company whose main concern is making money. Which I mean, come on, like, you're jumping to the defense of McDonald's. Do you want a Big Mac? <laughs> Maybe public perception has changed today because we see multi-million dollar companies now and we know that they, for the most part, don't really care about us. We see protest and backlash and whistleblowing against these big multi-million dollar companies. This wouldn't even be the last time that McDonald's was in hot water. I mean, don't get me started on that whole monopoly fiasco. I just can't do it. I won't do it. There's definitely a documentary somewhere. Go watch it. But today there's numerous articles, news stories, YouTube videos, and even a full length documentary on HBO called Hot Coffee to shine light on the real story, on Stella and her story. We have such a larger and easier access to information because of the internet today and we now know the truth and I think that's why the public perception has changed because we looked into it and we were like oh that's not what happened are bad and because of this Stella is seen as the victim that she was like many personal injury lawsuits Stella's story started with one albeit very severe injury but uncovered a pattern of just crappy company behavior that put a lot of people at risk. Behaviors and policies that may have gone unchecked for a long time and might have left a lot more victims had Stella not come forward. And so concludes the Liebig versus McDonald's case. Feel free to like and subscribe and leave a comment suggesting any other videos you'd like to see. You to me, Grandma, you were a hero. You were a hero for the people. And even though the people may not see you as such, I want to let you know I do, and I fully believe it, and uh, I love you so much.